Yes. So real quick, we, <laughs> what we were doing is we were redoing. So we're in a series that we're calling the five P's of producing a harness. And the first P was preparing. And we took three weeks on that. Yes. And the second P um, is, is uh, excuse me, the first P was planning. And we took three weeks on that. Our second P is preparing. Mm -hmm. And this is the second week of part two of uh, preparing. And we were reviewing what we did in part one. And uh, basically what we said, I'll go all the way back for you, is that we said that the word kun is the Hebrew uh, for the word prepare yeah. um, in, in, in the scriptures that we were using, right? And that word kun means to firmly establish a thing, to, to, to set it up, yeah. uh, to make it ready, uh -huh. to do what you needed to do. To but most importantly, to make it, to stand, stand it up. up. Yeah. To stand it up so it can be seen, so it can be firm, so it can get ready to operate and accomplish all that it is to accomplish. Yes. Now we decided to take the route to give you the five foundations that you need to have in order to be a preparer. Mm -hmm. So really qualities, really um, um, character traits, things yeah. that you need to adopt, practices that you must have in order to be a good preparer. Yeah. And the first one that we said was to be humbly curious. Wow. So we were using um, the scripture in Luke 2 when Jesus, uh, they, his family went to, I think it was Jerusalem they went to, <laughs> Bethlehem, wherever it was, they went in uh, Jerusalem, wasn't it? I don't remember it was, where they right? went. You can tell them not a One Bible scholar. Places. They went to town, right? <laughs> all of them, and they, and they went to leave. When they left, they didn't know that Jesus wasn't with them. It was a couple days Jesus. later, they go, where's Jesus at? Anybody seen Jesus? <laughs> right? So they realized they left them in the town. So they yes. went back to the town and they found him in the temple doing what? It said listening yeah, asking and asking questions, questions learning, learning about the thing that he was going to do. Right. And then so the first uh, 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 quality you need to have is to be humbly curious. Yes, indeed. The second quality you need to have is to be single minded. And we came from that verse in there where, where Mary said, How, why'd you do this to us? Why? You know, you knew we were leaving. What was up with that? <laughs> and he said, didn't you know I'd be about my father's yes, business? Yes. You of all people should right. 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 So right. he was focused on the vision. The third uh, quality that we told you need to have was to be obedient. Yeah. Um, because right after that, you know, after Mary got on him a little bit, it said he was subject to their authority. He went yes. with them and was subject to their authority, even though it was clear that he had a different purpose. And that purpose was to be, you know, in the place where he was at that time. And then the fourth thing that we said uh, that you needed to have is a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. And we broke that growth mindset into three pieces, mm -hmm. right? But it was pretty much a culture of personal development in, in, in your wisdom, in, in being mature, and your, your, your uh, accountability, discipline, your focus, uh, your ability to sacrifice for a thing that you want to accomplish. And then growing in favor. Yeah. In other words, we said you need the seed where or what you want to receive, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to be a doctor, then you got to study to be a doctor. Right. You know what that's I mean? Right. So you can't just say this is what I want to be <laughs> and, and expect it to happen. That's not what you got to do the work. You got to do the work, right? And then the fifth uh, uh, quality of prepare that we said, we used a different story, but it was honesty. Mm. So we used the five virgins. There were five wise and five foolish, yeah. and they all took some oil, right? But the wise ones took more oil than they needed to burn right then. Mm -hmm. prepared. They prepared for the long stay. Yeah. And here's why we said honesty came in place, because the, the mm. foolish virgins asked the wise virgins for some oil, yeah. and they said no. Nah. 
get my go, own. go to Walmart and get your own. <laughs> because if I give you mine, then there won't be enough for either of us. Right. So you got to be honest with what you have and what you don't have and what you can do and what you cannot do in order to be a preparer. So that was what we talked about last week. So we're yeah. going to finish up Two preparing, today. right? Mm -hmm. Finish up preparing. And we have 20 minutes to do it. Actually got less time, more time than we, than we did when we don't mess up, <laughs> right? With the mute. So we, again, I apologize. I had it on mute. So we talked the whole five minutes uh, before uh, um, um, Llewellyn let us know that we were on mute. So thank you for that. Welcome, welcome, welcome in again to Launch 360 with Kim and Dr. Newt. We're going to move on to our second part or part two of... Um, preparation and i am going to i want to to uh, um kind of come out of the verse we're going to use second kings a story in second kings second kings the fourth chapter the first seven verses mm -hmm. first second kings the fourth chapter the second uh the first seven verses uh it should be on the screen now um and we're going to talk about preparation part two yeah. um if i was to kind of um give this i guess a title mm -hmm. uh if you will i would call it um the four things the preparation involves okay the four things the preparation involves so it's the second part of this and the first thing that involves. wait let me, let me read the story mm -hmm. i'm going to read the story so we're at first uh second kings the fourth chapter and it said it's, it's the story of elijah and the widow's oil mm -hmm. right it says a certain woman of wives of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to elijah saying your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take mm. my two sons to be slaves, right? So you got to understand that the, the, the uh, custom back then was if you died wow. and you didn't pay your student loans, then your kids had to pay your student loans. I mean, just kind of mixing the two together so you understand yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> so whatever debt they had back then, the debt carried over to yeah. the sons, uh, you know, and the family, right? If the sons couldn't pay the debt, then that per the sons were made to work for whoever the debtor was. So that was what was going. They coming to take her sons because of the debt the father had, mm -hmm. but the father was a devout man devoted to Elijah doing great work and he must have died suddenly. So Elijah said to her, um, what shall I do for you? Mm -hmm. Tell me what do you have in the house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of but oil. <laughs> right, so that's important. Samaritan has nothing in the house. Pause, but a jar of oil. We'll come back to that. Right? Then he said, "Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Uh, empty vessels. Mm -hmm. Do not gather just a few. Yeah. Do not Stretch gather just a few. Stretch your face. Right, right, yeah. right. But she ain't know. She just she, she, know. she don't know what's going on yet. Right? <laughs> just, just you know. So we looking at it from the end. We know what happened. Right? So and 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 when you have come in. You shall shut the door behind you and your sons, mm -hmm. right? And that's important because some things you do, everyone doesn't need to know about. Mm. I paused and wanted to be quiet for a second there. There's some things you do that everyone doesn't need to know about. Some things in your forward progress that you need to focus on. Uh, maybe you have a wife or a husband or something, but everyone doesn't need to know about because you don't need the chatter. That's you right. don't need the noise. You don't need the distraction. You don't need the opinion. You don't need mm -hmm. any of that. You just need to focus on exactly what you see to do that God is telling you to do so you can keep your eye on the prize and to accomplish it. That's right. So go in, shut the door, you and your sons, because mm -hmm. that's who this is for. Right. Because that's who this is that's for. Good. All right. <laughs> shut the door. Right. And, 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 and then pour all the oil into those vessels. Set aside the full ones. Mm -hmm. So uh, she went from him. Shut the door, yeah, right behind her and her sons who brought the vessels up to her. She poured it in and, uh, and she poured it out. She poured out the oil, yeah. right? Um, now it came to pass when the, the vessels were full that she said to her sons, Bring me another vessel, yeah, right? So before we get to that, I just want to kind of like I'm picturing it in my mind, mm -hmm. right? She pouring the oil on the one, like she has no idea what's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? What did this dude? He told me to do this, okay? I know he's a man of God, I'm just going to do what he says, mm -hmm. right? Not knowing what's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? So she poured the oil, she only had a little bit. Well, she poured it in, in, in the container, and the container was bigger than the, the one she started with. And it was more, she's like, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, mm -hmm. give, me, give me another one of them. <laughs> and she started, and oil came out. It yeah. should be gone. Yes. It should be gone. Glory you to You've used God. all your resources. You've done all you know how to do. you stood all you can stand. 
you don't know how your bills gonna get paid. Mm -hmm. You don't know how you're gonna finish this semester of school. Your children are acting up. Your family is is this way. You don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You've done all you can do. Just keep pouring just the oil. Just keep pouring the just oil. Keep pouring the oil, right? So she 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 pouring. I could just see her getting excited. Yo yo, bring it on. Yo yo, no. Do they? God, check this out, right? I can see that I would be bugging, right? It's coming out some more oil, right? So she's pouring all this oil that shouldn't be there, right? Um, and, and then all of a sudden she says, "All right, bring me another one, bring me another one," because she's excited now, yeah. right? Right? Now I can just picture my kids, right? Mm -hmm. When Kim said, "Bring me another one, get another one, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up," right? And I can see Newton Doobie. That's my two sons. That's what he named her, right? Right. <laughs> They bumping each other. Yo, who gonna tell her it's no more? No more vessels. We're no more vessels, mm. right? <laughs> so uh, they said to her, uh, "There's not another vessel." So I can just see my sons, Newton Doobie, like standing there for a minute. They go to the other room. <laughs> well, I ain't telling you. Tell her she's hype, man. You tell her she, she ain't coming at me, right? But uh, they probably they probably would have sent Newt, right? <laughs> and he would have to come say, um, "There's no more." We don't have mm -hmm. no more vessels, right? We didn't plan. Uh, mm. We didn't. We didn't prepare for for this amount of harvest. My God. We only prepared for what we thought, Ooh. you know, could could possibly happen. So we did. Yeah. Right. Right. For this amount of harvest. My God. So then, what happened? Mm. The oil ceased. Mm. There were no more vessels. That's so good. The oil ceased. Then she said, then she came to the man of God. So after it's all done, she still didn't know what to do with it. I mean, I guess she still didn't see me. I got a whole room full right. of oil right there. Right. right? She didn't know that's, that's cash money. Right? <laughs> Everybody needs some oil. But she right? didn't see it. She did, still didn't see it. She didn't see right? it. Because she's still in preparation phase, mm -hmm. right? And and she went to the man of God. He said, go sell the oil. Mm -hmm. Pay all your debts. And you and your sons can live. Oh on the rest. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, um, we just kind of want to jump into that just a little real quick. We have about 15 minutes to do so. Um, and, and, and what I want to talk about today are the four things that preparation involves, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you four steps, right? But just, just as a kind of a mathematician, if you will, the four things or an educator, if you will, the four things that kind of involve is it, it, there's there's some development of character that has to happen, mm -hmm. right? And then there's some skill building that has to happen. There's some type of service or something you have to do. Yeah. And then you have to have an eye on the outcomes. There needs to be mm. some type of measurement. So that there's like a cycle that takes place. So I'm gonna, I, I know I said that real quickly, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of break them down for you into four steps. So mm. again, uh, uh, we'll talk about First Kings uh, 4, 1 through 7. Right. And um, remember when um, uh, uh, the young lady went to Elijah, the widow went to Elijah. She said, listen, my sons, you know, they're about to come get my sons. Mm -hmm. Right. Predators. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first step is to evaluate. Mm -hmm. The first step in preparation is to evaluate. Take inventory of your journey. You know, what, what do you see? What, what what what's going on right now? You know, be honest with your inventory. Don't try to fool yourself. That, you know, so like like um, people who who have gone through some type of addiction, um, it, it's 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 a dark time. It's not something that you always want to admit and think about to yourself. But in order to get out of it, you have to first be uh, uh, take an inventory. You know mm -hmm. what what what's going on in my life. You know, people have financial uh, uh, woes or not real smart with their finances yeah. or whatever the case is. You got to evaluate what is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, what do I have? You know, mm -hmm. take inventory take of inventory. what's going on around you. She went to him and said, yo, Elijah, they coming to get my boys. Yeah. My you know, my, my, my husband died. I'm sure that was hard for her to mm -hmm. say. And they're coming to get my kids. Yeah. You know, I'm in a bad spot right, right now. Right. You know? A few food stamps ain't going to help me. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? I, I just try to keep it plain here. Mm -hmm. So she had to take inventory and evaluate where she was. And it was important that she did that, right? So that's the first step in what you're doing, right? So I want you to understand that when you take evaluation uh, of yourself or take inventory of, of what you have, whatever is going on, oh my God. you need to understand that the past is not a prediction mm. of, of, of your future. Taking that inventory that's right. doesn't mean that that's all you'll ever be and that's all you'll right. ever have. That's right. Your past is not a, a prediction of your future. 
but it will give you the proper perspective mm -hmm. so you can know what you need to do to keep going forward. That's right. Right. So that that inventory, that evaluation is very important in every area of your life, even the areas that you feel like are going well. Wow. Right. So, wow. That's good. So preparation is the mm. first step to keep moving. The second step or, or the second thing that you need to do, uh, the preparation involves is awareness. You guys type that in awareness. awareness. There has to be some awareness. You have to realize where you are. So that's a little different than evaluating. Mm -hmm. Evaluating and taking inventory is just kind of looking at what I have, what's taking mm. place, what's on my shelves, where it's empty. Awareness means realizing where you are. Where you are. Being self-aware. What's my thinking? What is my attitude? Yes. You know, what, what's happening all around me? When I was doing the garden in the backyard, when we were about to prepare, after we did mm -hmm. the planting piece, I went out and I stood in the place where we were about to till the ground. Mm -hmm. And I had to be aware of what was around. Yeah. Were there any rocks? Were there any wire? Was there mm -hmm. anything that was going to cause me some difficulty as I began to break this ground up? Yeah. Because I knew I had to break the ground up. That's right. As I was breaking the ground up, I ran into some real large rocks. Yes, huge uh, rocks. Yes, like they were down deep. I don't even know where they came yeah. from. It was like somebody... Uh, uh, like there was another land, concrete yes. land, like yeah. like a whole <laughs> underneath, foot right? or two underneath. Yeah, yeah. So I had to get on them, but I was aware. I hit one of them and I pulled it out, but it made me now aware of, are there any more? Mm -hmm. So you have to have a, 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 some awareness. Realize kind of where you are. Um, it's like folks who like go on American Idol or folks who sing in the choir at the church and uh -huh. everybody, the, the three people that love them, they are telling them, you, yeah, you can sing. You sound good. You sound great. But you're really not, you, 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 does that make, I'm not a singer, right? I mean, I can hold a note for a little bit in the choir, but <laughs> if you hand me the mic, I get all nervous and everything, and I'm all off the place looking at somebody who knows the note, trying to figure it out, because I'm aware that that's not my 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 gift, uh -huh. right? But there are some folks that have those three people that love mm -hmm. them, that'll tell them, yeah, you, you're the bomb, but you're really not, mm -hmm. you know, it's really not your gift. Maybe you just need to be the, the tenor in the middle, mm -hmm. you know, of everybody else. So you have to be aware of that because if yeah. not, you'll find yourself out there doing something or in a place and, and you're not able to produce because it's not your tent. It's not your calling. Right, mm -hmm. right. So preparation means you got to be aware. You got to know. Um, I'm a teacher. I can't go in a kindergarten class and try to teach them algebra two with a, a, right. you know, a, a, a tenth grade math book. Um, they might have fun, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm animated and all that kind of stuff. But I walk out of there and I have no clue what we just talked about. <laughs> he was funny, <laughs> yeah. is what they'll say. Right. I like him. <laughs> right. So I have to be aware of what they know yes. and what they're able to do That's in right. order to take them forward. All the right. same thing has to happen with you and yourself. Mm -hmm. In preparing for any harvest that you're going to produce, you have to know where you are. are. What's my prior knowledge? What are my practices? What are there's some things I'm trying to change in myself right now? Yeah, and it is a struggle in yes, my mind is. when I think about where I'm lacking. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's, I don't even want to say it out loud. It's That's hard how, to yes. see it. Yes, it's hard to admit that. Thing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so that, that's the second one. Be aware. Um, Being aware. Be aware. And, and just to remember, like last week, we talked about a Jesus shows that too when he went back to the temple. Uh huh. Now, Jesus is the son of God. You know, he's God in the flesh. Every question he was asking, everything he was listening to, he already knew the answer. knew the answer. Right? But yet he put himself in place mm. to what? Ask questions That's and listen. That's right. To be aware mm -hmm. of where he was. The third step uh, to um, uh, being a preparer or the third uh, thing that preparation involves is to, did it come up? Nope, 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 nope. There. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I forgot to say this to you. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Oh, wow. I see what I did. Wait a minute. That right there should be a number three, decide. not a number two. Okay. That should be number three, not number two. You guys type in decide. Typo. Decide is the third uh, 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 step or the third thing you need, uh, the third thing the preparation involves, mm -hmm. right? You have to decide where you want to be. Wow. You got to make a decision. 
Type in these side be, guys. Be quiet for a second there. You got to make a decision. Got to make a decision. That is hard that for a lot of folks. Hard. Making decisions is tough for a lot of folks, especially the older you get, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're married, you have a family, you have other people that you're um, considering. Yeah. You're young, you're single. Making a decision is not as tough as it is. You just keep it moving, keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. doesn't work, no big deal, and you understand that. When their stakes are a little higher, That's right. it, it, it gets a little tougher. Um, for some folks, it's just in their um, um, uh, personality type not to make a decision. Mm -hmm. We were out with one of our granddaughters and just asking her what she wants to eat. It, it, it was, <laughs> you know, was I'm not going to say it was a chore, but it was, she wouldn't, she wouldn't say what she wanted to eat. Now, I know you kind of know what you want to eat, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, some people is just in there, just who they are, hard yes. to make that decision. So as a preparer, you got to decide. You have to see where you want to be. You have to make that decision. You have to be firm in it. You got to say, this is the direction I'm going. Yes. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to have my book done mm -hmm. uh, uh, by the end of, 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 of April. Um, All right. And, Come on. And, 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 and that's what I'm deciding to do. So you have to know that's where you're going to go so you can plan backwards what your day has to look like so you can have that book that's done. That's right by the end of April. That's right. You understand? So there has to be a decision. I want you to understand that your decisions determine your actions and your actions determine your outcomes, mm -hmm. right? So remember, we were talking about this story with this this this, this widow, I, I didn't forget it, right? So she made a decision. Yeah. I'm going to go to this man of God mm -hmm. and see what he tells Let's us to do, he says. right? And then I'm going to do it. Yeah. She had a she had a choice even after that to not do what he said because what he said sounded you know kind of off like, the wall. Makes sense, yeah. right, right? Right. So it, and obviously she was kind of clueless because even after she had the oil, she had to go back to him and say, "What do I do with all what this?" I do. Right. Yeah. So you got to make a decision mm -hmm. like she made to move from where you are to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. They're telling me that in order for them to not get my sons, mm. I need to get these oil, you know, these vessels and fill them with oil. In order for them, in order for my credit to change, I need to stop spending frivolously. Yes, help me, Father. I need to, uh, <laughs> I need to create a budget. Um, yes. I may need to pick up a little extra income to get out of this mm -hmm. debt. Or I need to focus on one thing at a time, pay it off, and then what I was using to pay it add it to the next bill yes. so that I'm paying that off faster and then add that off to the next bill. It's called the snowball effect. Mm -hmm. And we'll tell you about that some other time, but I need to decide a thing mm -hmm. where I'm going to go so I can know what it is that I need to do. Yes. To get there. The fourth thing uh, that, that takes place in order that preparation involves is to get some directions. I've been in y'all directions. Get some directions. Thank you. you. Got some instructions. Mm -hmm. Got to get some instructions. So I know I'm talking a lot. You guys okay. fast. want to push through it, right? Um, Got to get some instructions. What did the widow get from Elijah? Mm -hmm. Instructions. If yes. you go back and read it, he said, go get vessels. Yep. Not a few. Mm -hmm. Right? Get vessels. Then he said, go in your house. Yeah. With you and your sons and do what? Shut the door. Because yeah. every you don't need no distraction mm -hmm. on this one. Mm -hmm. You need to move forward. Like that. This can't go on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. This is not something you want to share with just anybody. Right. This is something that you need to focus on right now, here and now. This is important. This is life changing. This is pivotal. You are preparing to go where you're trying to go. And I'm the one that can take you there. Yes. You don't need to hear from anyone else yes. right Right now, do what I'm telling you to do. Yes. I'm hoping you're feeling this right now. I'm talking to myself, right? <laughs> right. Shut that door, the door and do what you need to do. Then just pour the oil. Yeah. He gave her directions. He gave her instructions. She followed the directions. Mm -hmm. She followed those instructions. And 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 listen. I, it, what happened was uh, um, the oil stopped mm. when the vessels when there were no more vessels. Right. See, God will. A uh, 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 supply for you to the point of your preparation. There it is, right? Uh, uh, um, so when when you can't see past a certain point, mm. then that's where God will stop mm -hmm. giving uh, uh, mm -hmm. provision. Mm. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm. So till we get to that point, and something else occurs in our life uh, where we we our faith can you know see past that point to the next, then the provision will start mm. again, maybe. <laughs> All right. Or it'll start again in another way, because yeah. at this point, when the oil was done, the oil was done. Right. Wow. Right. So uh, uh, if we only prepare what we think God will meet our need, then that's where he'll stop. 
My God. He'll stop right there, right? So, so we have to prepare uh, 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 where we think is illogically possible. So when we were making our garden, mm -hmm. right, we didn't know we were going to get such a great harvest. That's right. Right? We were just preparing for... A little. We got a whole lot, right? We got more than we, we can. Got more than we we can. <laughs> we but, can eat, right? But here was the deal: that ground had the potential to produce a thing. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to understand something: that even in our about halfway through the summer, all my cucumbers died. Mm, this is a right. Good one. They caught a virus, not a virus, a, um, mm -hmm. a fungus, fungus, right? Because I watered them too much, and, and, and the water was pooling and sitting there, and and a little fungus got in the water, and all my cucumbers. And I was, we were producing like, our cucumbers were like 16 inches long. Yeah. They were nice. Maybe like beautiful. 12 a week. I oh, was giving goodness. them to people. They were so wonderful. Many. I mean, I was just eating whole cucumbers like For a dinner. sandwich. <laughs> yes. Right? They, they were really nice. And then about halfway through, they just died. They just, you know, started dying, going off. Why? Because in my preparation phase, I didn't, I, there were things I didn't know, first of all, and didn't have the directions to do. And I couldn't see past those few cucumber, cucumbers that we had right then. Mm -hmm. If I would have seen that and knew what to do, we would have irrigated a little better. Yeah. And they would have produced all summer long. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can see the, the, the connection to that. You have to get some instructions. Mm -hmm. You have to get some directions because provision stops. Where vision, vision stops. stops. Oh, that's good. Where you stop Ooh, seeing, that in. Provision, vision stops, stops coming. Right, provision stops where vision, and I know I'm over my time already. If you guys, I can I ask your permission to give four more minutes? Go ahead. Just four more minutes. So I want to took that word provision. So I did, I don't have a visual for you, but if you can visualize in your mind pro p r o and vision v i s i o n the word provision breaking in two mm. pieces. So if you look at pro, pro means advanced. Mm -hmm. um, it means above and beyond, and sometimes it means before. Cool. Right. So if you look at that word vision, it means what is seen. Yeah. Right. So uh, uh, the, you can't have provision without a vision. Mm. You can't see you, you. You can't see a thing unless you've done something before. Mm. Am I making sense to you? Provision. You can't see in advance unless you prepare in advance, unless you have something to actually see. So yes. I just kind of wanted to, to put them together for you. So if if, if if you're lacking change, yeah. If you you can only change what you see. Mm. If you're lacking change, if you're lacking uh, 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 in your life, then you have to change what you see. Mm -hmm. You have to go back be and, and and before the vision. Yeah. Prepare. Mm -hmm. Am I making Wait, sense? Say that again. Say that again. Before the vision. Prepare. Before the vision. Prepare. So before you get to what it is you think you want to do, to see, to be, mm -hmm. to accomplish, to establish, you have to prepare. You mm. provision doesn't happen without vision. Yeah, you and must vision prepare. doesn't happen unless something pro happens in advance. Ooh. So the word provision itself is telling us what that cycle is that we need to do, right? So provision stops. Uh, 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 where, where, where vision stops. So I just want to leave you one, one last thing. I don't have a vision for this, uh, a thing for this. I, I asked you for four minutes. I got two left, right? Um, <laughs> um, so here's the deal. I want you to understand that preparation has a season. Yeah. There's a season to prepare. So I'm going to use our garden. We couldn't wait till harvest season, which is usually September, October, somewhere in there. Everything's done, right? Uh, uh probably August, September, everything. I mean, it starts to get colder here where we are and things don't grow anymore. I couldn't wait till then to prepare the ground to produce a harvest that year. Mm -hmm. I can't wait till the harvest season to, to prepare the soil yeah. to produce a harvest. Am I making sense to yep. you? There's a season in which you need to prepare. Yeah, You need to be very aware of the uh, opportunities that are coming forth for you so you can prepare when it's time yes. to prepare. The five foolish, foolish versions did not prepare mm -hmm. when it was time to prepare. And they had to leave and go to Walmart and get some oil. Mm -hmm. And by the time they got back, because the lines was long, right? The 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 the, yeah, the, door the was husband closed. was gone and mm -hmm. the door had closed. Yeah. So there's a time to prepare, there's a season for it. So you need to prepare in that season uh before the harvest, because there's some things, my friends, 
you just can't go back and do. My God. And I know we don't like to hear that as Christians. God can do everything. There's a season that comes around, time for everything. There's some things mm. that you just don't get that opportunity again, right? Like to be 21 yes, again. Yes, right. You just don't get that now, opportunity. Now, now, my purpose when I was 21 is still my purpose now yes. I'm 56. But I can't, the opportunities I had at 21, I don't have them anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I can't go back and do them. They, that, that was 30 some years ago. So another story, another time. Listen, you guys, hopefully you grab some morsel from this. You can take with you to educate yourself, motivate yourself, and help yourself grow. I'm going to download this. Uh, do you want the children thing? or? <laughs> yes. Okay, guys. So he's going to log in. And so you're getting week three. Okay. All right. So he's logging in um, now. Father... We thank you, Father. We bless your name. We give you all glory. We thank you for this opportunity to understand the purpose of planning. And, Father, for us to know that there's a season for it. Thank you, Father, for the vision that you've given us. But, Father, before we go forth to walk in that vision, go back before the vision and lay out the plan. Let planning be our first step. Looking in your words, studying and understanding what it is that you are calling us to. So that then when we have organized ourselves, so we can walk in the vision and not worry about whether we got to go back and fix things. So, Father, we thank you that you've released that in this atmosphere today. And we trust you, Lord. And we are going to be obedient, obedient. And we're going to follow the plan. You guys typed in the steps. Hallelujah. Llewellyn typed them in. Number one was to evaluate. Two was to be aware. Three was to decide. Four was to uh, was directions. So these are the things that we are going to do as we go forth. Yes, For yes. those of you who are on, we have uh, the launch kids ministry coming up. It's a mini lesson. It's going to follow right through. If you have children and they're not attending Sunday school, sit them down now. It's probably about a seven minute message. Right, right. Before we do that, though, we got to say it. We got to say it because we say it every week. It's, That's our, right. it's our theme song. You know, <laughs> every every superhero has to have a theme song. And you are a superhero, whether you know it or not. You are a superhero. There's a lot riding on what you do. Yes. So somebody's waiting for you to accomplish what you need to accomplish so they can start their journey. Yes. That's how That's how important, important you, are you are to this whole plan. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to say to yourself and to tell the atmosphere around you that you are good ground. Say it. I, I am good ground. ground. You Take tell, that in, guys. Tell, listen, you're not saying it to convince yourself. No. You're telling it. You're telling everything around you, mm -hmm. listen, I'm good ground. That's right. So when you sprinkle seeds, they grow. <laughs> they go grow. When you grow. say it and believe it. That's right. Well, I'm good ground. Everything, everything grows here. Everything grows here. Everything grows here. You got to walk like that. You got to talk like that. You got to believe like like that and you gotta help it grow yeah all right you guys we thank you we thank you we thank you and we are not launching at you we We're are launching, launching with, with you. you stay here and watch kid uh, ministries 360 international ministries for kids hey guys i'm super j and today is saturday launch international kids on saturday that's right and i'm super zach well, we are here for Launch 360 Ministries, Kid International, that is. That's right, Launch 360 International Ministries for kids. All kids, one big world and one great big guy. Here we are growing, learning, and becoming who we're called to be every day. Children are growing, so start them off the way they should go. And even when they're old, they will not turn from it. Proverbs 22, 6. They're learning, so fathers, don't exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Ephesians 6 and 4. And they're becoming, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Romans 8, 19. this cool message from our new friend, Dino Bear, who's going to let you know about your potential. And he's also going to make you aware of how to protect yourself so that the enemy doesn't try to stop your potential. Take it away, Dino Bear. Hey guys, my name is Dino Bear, and I'd like to welcome you to Launch 360, International Ministries for Kids. And we're talking about potential. Just so you know, you've got potential. Let's talk about what potential is. Webster declares potential 
as an unrealized ability, which kind of means that you have all kinds of things deep down in you, but you don't know it. And we know that anything unrealized or unknown is like a secret that keeps you from moving forward or doing all the things that you're supposed to do. We all know what happens with a secret. Only certain people know, while others are kept in the dark. Hey, who just turned the lights off? So in other words, potential is great, but it has to be realized. Realizing your potential illuminates your abilities and gifts so that everyone can see them, even you. And today, we want everyone to realize their potential and know who they are. To realize means to become fully aware of something as a fact, and the truth about it is clearly understood. Realizing potential gives us the ability to see the greatness that lies deep within us, deep down inside of us. It's that light that shines within us so that we can develop into and become all that we're capable of. It's our Jeremiah 29 and 11. It lights our pathways so that we can fulfill the plans that God has for us. Those plans that He, our Creator, put in us from the very beginning of time. Realizing our potential and living in our Jeremiah 29 and 11 ensures us that we will have a great future and much success. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know all the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. That's for all of us. See, he even took time to write a plan about us. So what stops our potential? Not knowing who we are and whose we are. So in this week's video, you're going to learn about my friend Paul, whose name used to be Saul. He was a person filled with potential, but he used it the wrong way. And he used it the wrong way because he didn't understand how important he was into the kingdom of God. And his ways were a little rough on the Christian. But he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he changed his ways. And then he began to share the truth about Jesus. Paul was, I would say, a full of potential belief. So friends, this week, I want you to remember the plans that God has for you. They're the plans that want you to prosper and to bring you good success and no harm. I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, you've got to realize all the potential that's inside of you. Wow, that was pretty awesome, Dino Mir. I get it now. God has plans for us, and he's declaring that those plans will make me prosperous, and they're going to give me a future, a great future, and I won't have to worry about being harmed. That's Jeremiah 29 and 11, and I'm going to walk in it every day. Thanks so much, Dino Mir. Yeah, that was pretty awesome, and you're right, Super Zach. I'm going to walk in my full potential, too. I realize that God made plans for us, not just me, but for all of us. And check out this great video by Saddleback Kids, just like Dino Mirror was telling you. We're going to learn about Paul and how he learned how to use his potential for God. The Miracle of Mercy, Paul. This is Saul. Saul was a Pharisee who hated the followers of Jesus so much that he would hunt them down to be brought to trial in Jerusalem. And he would even seek to murder them. Saul was uttering threats 
with every breath, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He asked him to write a letter to the Jews in Damascus that would allow him to arrest any Christians he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Now Saul went on his way, and as he came near Damascus, a light from heaven flashed around him, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul cried out, Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus. Rise and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. So Saul got up and he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see anything. So the men who were with Saul led him into the city. After three days, a man named Ananias came to Saul. He put his hands on Saul and immediately Saul could see again. And with that, Saul became a follower of Jesus. He became the very thing he had tried to hunt. And he immediately began telling people that Jesus is the Son of God. And he taught them about the mercy of God that he had received. And all who heard him were amazed. He then went by a new name, Paul, as he began preaching not just to the Jewish people, but to everyone. Despite many difficulties like being imprisoned, shipwrecked, and narrowly escaping death multiple times, Paul continued to preach about Jesus. Paul said that he would do everything he could to save people and help them know God. And that's just what he did in order to reach people who would otherwise be unreached. And many came to know Jesus because of what Paul said. Paul taught many in his day through his letters, but even more have come to learn more about Jesus through the letters of Paul that can be read even to this day. We know that the enemy of potential is not knowing who you are. Now, we are going to know who we are and we are going to walk in our full potential. And we are going to walk in our full potential. So friends, I'll see you here next week. And remember, God gave you a plan and use your potential to fulfill it. See you here next week for Launch 360 Ministries. Kids International Ministries, that is.